The Yakshas are at three and the Shedils are at eight. Yeah. Now, at most, the Yakshas can hope for a draw, which will be decided by this game of Dota 2. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to you, Cypher. What could probably be the last time? My name is Vivek, with me is CloudX, and you're watching the beginning of the end. It began with six teams in a grueling round robin, and two of the very best teams will face it out for a game of Dota 2 to determine who takes home 20 lakh rupees for first prize and 12 lakh per second. Yakshas currently on the Radiant side. Shadil's going to be Five on the dire. Shadil's are the ones with the upper hand, however. They've won two of today's matches. Yakshas fighting for survival here. If they win this one, we move on to a tiebreaker. If Shadil's win, they take it all. Yeah. Shadil's, they're going to start with the standard tried and tested Lich and the Night Stalker ban, while Yakshas are going to get rid of the Underlord, something that we saw the Shadil's running in their previous matchup. The Batrider and the Brewmaster. I'm seeing a pattern here. This They're, is an anti Khans draft coming out from Yakshas. Absolutely. It's an anti Khans draft. All of Khans is uh, favored off planers being banned out in the first phase. The question is how much more is, are they Radiant's going to target Khans? Yeah. Um, Nick's going to be the last man from the Shadows. Uh, they have run the storm, if I'm not mistaken. Mamasita does have a wide hero pool. But Yakshas, first pick for them. Now, this is where they're probably going to be looking to pick up Pung's hero. And Pung. Or Strap in your seatbelts because oh, we shit. could be seeing the Medusa or the Spectre. Okay. Both have been left in the mix. Both are Acrid's go to heroes. And I mean, I don't Five see what's stopping Yakshas remaining. from picking it up right now. Okay. Turn to They're going to go with the silence. It's going to be Punk's punk hero. hero yeah. So, Punk uh, is to some extent the very epitome of what a silencer player should be. He sledges so hard outside the game that he's shutting his enemies up. Last time these two pick. teams Disruptor. played, Opa became a little unstable and uh, a lot of madness ensued on stage. Uh, let's hope that Opa can keep his calm this time around because Punk is really a factor. He's more than, more than a five position. He's a trash talker of the team <laughs> and it's really tilting, it's really triggering. I mean, last time he made me uncomfortable here over at the Caster's desk. Yeah, I mean, Sheridans has this really interesting Five dynamic going for them. Remaining. While Punk is good at tilting opponents, Ujwal aka Crazy, the sixth man standing yeah. behind them, he's probably received the most taunts from Radiant Punk in his life. <laughs> Honestly, they've played versus each other and with each other for the longest time in the golden age of Indian Dota. And if there's anyone that can keep his team under control, it's Ujwal. Okay. Um, you've got uh, Disruptor and Spirit Breaker coming out for Sheridil. Surprisingly, Yaksha still had the opportunity to pick up their go-to one positions. Now, we had an opportunity Ten to speak seconds. to Sheridil's outside the Vanities as well. And we saw that Yaksha's, that Sheridil's were Five prepared for that remaining. Spectre and that Medusa pickup. They've chosen not to ban it out. This could imply that they've got something up their sleeves, an ace in the hole, so to speak, that yep. they're going to pull out here. Do you think the Slark does Dyer's well versus the Medusa? Now. Medusa? Slark could be one of those heroes that could help. I mean, the it's Medusa has been picked up. I'm curious to see how the Shadows respond. I, I, I mean, we can be fairly certain Yakshas are going to be looking to ban heroes like the Anti-Mage and the Invoker here. You don't want to have Mana Burn versus the Medusa in okay. any form or factor. Nyx has already been banned out by Shadows. It seconds. seems as if that Nyx ban was almost a bait for Yakshas to pick up the Medusa. I'm not sure remaining. why you'd ban out a Mana Burn hero and not Here's pick the Medusa the yourself ban. when she's proven herself to be one of Dyer's the most potent heroes now. here on the set. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that uh, Yakshas got their hands on the Medusa and chose to pick it up as opposed to their Spectre. Spectre's had an auto win pretty much in this tournament yeah. throughout. Spectre's had a higher win rate than Medusa. I, I remember Marksman losing a game with the Medusa. I think it was uh, Zark or Mage, I'm not quite sure. One of them was playing the mid. Yeah, Zark was playing the mid Medusa and Mage was playing the safe lane Rao. Mm -hmm. And Five they did end up remaining. losing that game despite it being very close. But yeah, Spectre's more of an auto win than the Medusa in my eyes. 
So, Sherdils has read this pretty well, I'd say. They know that uh, Yakshas like running that Undying and Medusa yeah. duo, and they've chosen to ban out the Undying right away. Yakshas has gone ahead and banned out the Razor. A hero that debatably does okay versus the Medusa. I don't want to say he does well because eventually the Medusa is going to get a Lincoln Sphere and the Static Link is basically going to get triggered by the Lincolns or rather the Lincolns is going to get triggered by the Static Link. I'm in agreement with the Spectre ban to a certain extent, especially if it was going to be one of those old school Diffusal Blade Spectres. Mana Burn aka Feedback is basically the way to deal with Medusa, but Anti-Mage is left in the mix. Sheridals are going to start things up by picking, off, picking up that Omni Knight. This should be an offlane Omni Knight and with the Guardian Angel, they've got a way to deal with the Medusa's damage output. However, with the Silencer in the mix, a well-timed Global Silence and a well-timed Stone Gaze could turn the tables in favor of Yaksha once yes. again. Which is why to some extent, I like the Spirit Baker Five as a pick. Remaining. Uh, simply because you can jump on top of the Silencer if he does show himself in battle. And you can force him to make hasty decisions, maybe just bait out the global silence, heck, even kill him. Yeah. Which is something that a Spirit Breaker is very capable of doing. He can handle the silence in these fights if he does see him and does manage to charge him before the global silence comes out. So we're not going to see an Appa Tinker despite the fact that Shirdils have some ways to deal with him. We're going to see the ban coming out from them here, but the third pick is on the board and Yakshas, they should be looking for their mid. I or their four position. I think they're going to point. look at their four position here. VP's hero, Clockwork, is something he's played a lot. Um, Clockwork, Sand King, both in the pool. Clockwork, Sand King, Slada. Those are his heroes. It's going to be the Slada. We've seen a fair bit of offlane Slada as well in the recent past, but I'm not sure if this is a game for the offlane Slada. Mm -hmm. He's probably just wanna go, going to want to go on the four position. and. In fact, you might want to have Silencer and Slada rotating about the map Ten unanimously. Okay. One team that we did see running the Silencer well through this tournament was Crusaders. Um, SSK did remaining. play a lot of it and every now and then we'd see him walking away with a whole bunch of intelligence. Unfortunately, the team just couldn't find their groove and they couldn't click, which is why we're probably going to see Yaksha show us how it's done. Mm -hmm. Fourth pick on the board here for Sherdils. What's a decent core to go with the Omni Knight? Oh, the OD is in the mix, and OD is actually a really good way to deal with Medusa. Maybe this was their plan all along. Deal with the Medusa by picking up the Outworld Devourer. OD Omni? Yeah. The dirty cancerous days of uh, pre patch Dota. It still works, right? Because Omni Knight got a subtle buff with the Diffusal Blade being nerfed. Yeah. The lack of dispels on the side of the Yakshas is a bit worrying as well. Mm hmm. Shedrils has to take a call here. Do they want to go with a Manta style hero, which seems like a good choice versus the Slara and the Silencer, or do they Radiant's just want to go with the OD and pick up a BKB Templar for him eventually? Assassin. It's going to be a Templar Assassin. This okay. is. I'm good not entirely in agreement with this because Yakshas has the opportunity to get Viper, and there it is, man. Immediately, Yakshas, they don't even take a second to think about it. I feel like they're just schooling Shedrils in this draft. Do you think the Templar Assassin was the right pick? Absolutely I, not. I'm not sure why. Ten seconds. Uh, Absolutely I not. I mean, because it's not just the Viper. They had the option to pick up the Venomancer as well. Why would you fourth pick a Templar Assassin when you know that there's so much damage over time that they can throw at you? And now, good luck killing both the Viper and the Medusa this game. <laughs> yeah, two heroes that are going to be very difficult to kill. But uh, I have seen the Sheddles play a similar draft in another Ten tournament. Seconds. Um, I'm not going to tell what they ended the draft Five with because I'm curious remaining. to see if this actually comes into effect. They did run a very similar draft at ESL. And uh, drafts based around the Omni Knight are starting to become a thing internationally as well. Uh, Mineski has run it. Uh, excuse me, Newbie has run it twice. They ran it once against Mineski and they won. They ran it once against Secret. But Secret, despite having CTY, were just uh, too strong for them. Uh, the last band coming out from the Yakshas is going to be anti-major. Now I think it's safe to... I, I've got to hold on. So, so they're looking for a Kalnaik hero. You spoke of the Venomancer. What else? Venomancer's in the mix. Sand King is still an option. You could run the offlane Slada and then go for a four-position Clockwork. Ten Clock's still in the seconds. mix, by the way, so that wouldn't be a bad choice at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, since they're banned out so many offlaners, they definitely remaining. have someone in uh, mind for Kalnaik here. He has. Has he played the offlane Monkey King? No. No, we haven't seen him play that. Send we saw off. him play an offlane Monkey I, I think they go for the send off. That would really throw a wrench into shape. It's going to be the oh, Doom. Oh, we forgot about him. Khan's go to hero has now been picked up by Yakshas. 
as a last pick at that. And I mean, this is one of those games where I'd say it's fine to have a Doom. Normally, I think the Doom's a waste of a pick, especially when they were first picking him and first banning him. But versus the Omni Knight, I can get behind Doom. Seconds. Five seconds remaining. I don't know what Shadows can I, pick here to redeem themselves. I, I mean, I feel like Yakshas has just unequivocally won the draft here. Hmm. Think about it, man. How are you planning to kill a Medusa, a Doom, or a Viper in this game? Their three cores are supremely tanky. The only solution here I can see is a Necroforce pick up at the end, which seems counterproductive. Okay. It's a Phantom Lancer. Up. And I am left scratching my what? head. Mixed feelings, yeah. I mean, Very mixed feelings, because Medusa is fantastic versus the Lancer. Yeah. It's, it kind of works both ways, because the Fusion Blade is good versus the Medusa. But Medusa is fantastic at taking out illusions. Yeah. This could also be one of those games where Akrid might consider picking up the Agnim Scepter. Uh, the Mystic Snake along with the Agnim Scepter does work even better versus uh, Shell answer. Rival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that but is yeah, a possibility. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the Yakshas. Uh, Sherdels have come with a plan. They, I'm pretty sure after playing them Ten across seconds. two round robins, they know that Medusa is going to get picked up. Um, they definitely have some plan here. I, I think I think the Phantom Lance is their answer to the Medusa. I mean, but plans aside, I feel like Yakshas has this. I, yeah. I, I'm pretty confident we're going to a tiebreaker based on this draft. I'm pretty confident that Sherdels has messed up on the stage. They knew this. They knew that the Medusa, Spectre and Razor are actors go to heroes. They chose not to ban these out. They chose to let it slip. And then Yakshas, they pick up the Medusa and then they build a draft around it, which is it's beautiful. I think Yakshas have done a fantastic job in their draft. They've got the upper hand. All they've got to do is execute. But the problem is, and to quote Mike Tyson here, <laughs> everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. And Sherdils are fantastic at punching first. I think we could see Yakshas crumbling under the pressure of being in a grand final. Yeah. That's the only thing that Shadows can bring to the table. We do have chinks in the armor. Like, we have seen uh, the Akra Monks put up a really tough fight versus them. Uh, they couldn't close the game, but Shadows are one of those teams that somewhat excel at putting an end to the game. Uh, a lot of confidence coming out from Shadows here, and especially Mama Sita, who has to play the Temple Assassin versus the Viper. Um, now, I, in my eyes, Appa is the better mid laner as far as the laning pace is concerned. He seems to do better, but Mama Sita just tends to excel in the mid-game, likes to get involved in fights early on. Let's see if he can have that same sort of impact this time around. We've got a pause coming out here. Both teams just taking a bit of a breather. The great Indian Dota pause. It's happened yeah. in every single game so far. Yeah, at least at this Cypher. time they paused during the draft instead of after loading in, which is a welcome change. It's a start. Okay. Um, CloudX's monitor is dying. If anybody can help us out, it'd be really nice. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Hopefully someone from tech can help me out here. <coughs> yeah, we've got one of those silly extended pauses coming out. Which really isn't a thing in Pro Dota. You're not supposed to pause no. immediately after the draft. But it's um, the pause is coming earlier and earlier in, into and the game, we're underway. <laughs> and hopefully it happens before the game at some point. Maybe ten years down the line, we won't have pauses in Indian Dota. I mean, unlike a previous episode, we've still got everyone in their seats. No one decided it's time to go to the bathroom at this point, so it was oh, just yeah. a strategic pause coming out. We counter strike now. <laughs> Tactical pauses. Tactical pauses. Right, as this game gets underway, let's start off with a quick introduction for what could be the last time that we cast a game on the Dota stage for U Cypher Season 1. On the side of the Radiant, you've got Yakshas with Punk handling that silencer. It's going to be Slada in the hands of VP. Appa's going to be playing that Viper. It's going to be Medusa courtesy Akrid and Kal Nayak will handle that Doom. Alright. Vivek yeah, uh, is having I, camera I issues as always, so I'm going to take on the other side as well. Mama Sita, he's going to be playing the Templar Assassin on the side of Shared Dills. It's going to be Disruption on the Spirit Breaker. Rival's going to be playing the Phantom Lancer. Disruptor's going to be handled by Opa. 
and we're gonna have Khans playing the off lane Omni Knight. We've still got a long ass pause going on here. Um, it doesn't seem like tech Way issues. Anchor. This game is. There we go. Looks like they're both good to go. The game is gonna get underway here. Yeah, sorry. There's always a problem with my camera for some reason. Hopefully, it gets fixed. And it's not getting fixed. Okay. Okay, then. Well, you think that the Shadils have sort of lost the draft? I guess they were prepared for this Medusa. I don't know if it's going to work, but let's see if the Phantom Lancer is indeed an answer to this Medusa. All right, sorry about that, guys. We're having some tech issues. Looks like someone decided to mess with our scripts, and now we're gonna have to do manual uh, 2014 camera control for you guys. Please bear with us. But all right, let's take a quick look here. Both teams are gonna be playing it rather safe. We're not seeing that uh, silly shenanigan where teams tend to run all the way around and make that smoke play happen. Mm -hmm. We've got yeah. another pause coming out from the Templar Assassin again. I'm not entirely sure why they seem to be keep constantly pausing. Perhaps it is tech issues this time around. Offlane Omni Knight, uh, is there anything he can build here that really benefits his team? Well, Lotus Orb is certainly on the cards here. It's one of the better games to be building a Lotus Orb. Um, the Greaves is going to do him some good versus uh, the Global Silence as well. There's a lot uh, that Khan has to do for his team in terms of just support and utility. And um, it's all going to rest on the laning phase that he has. But yeah, this is still a matchup of the foes. VP shows himself in lane. Now, Kalnak is nearby, hoping to contest, but Rival and Disruption making their way. It's Rival who picks up the bounty rune. Kalnak needs to be careful. VP being pushed back by the Lance. The charge is there. Lel1 charge doesn't do that much. VP still has the crush. Yeah, he's alright. They yeah, don't get the bounty right. rune, but they do manage to escape with their lives, which still, I'd say, works out in their favour to a certain extent. CloudX's monitor is dying, my camera control scripts are dead. This should be a fun one. <laughs> so sorry guys. So no they are running a dual lane, lane, which is something we spoke of. The 2-1-2 as a way to get uh, your off laner a better start. Uh, they are trying to get Kalnayak uh, as good a start as possible, while it seems as if Khans is all by himself versus the Medusa. Now, what is Punk up to? Okay, he's gone out and tried to help the mid lane. How's Khans looking on the bottom lane? I mean, he's did he start off with boots? No, he's gone with a whole bunch of regenerative items for now. He's and he's not put his first point into regen. Yeah, thankfully, <laughs> he's only gone to that for now. As an off lane Omni Knight, without a pudge next to you, I, I don't think you put that point into the regen. Or, okay, never mind, maybe you do. Uh, yeah, he's hit two, so he puts the second point into purification. Mid lane, Mamacita forced to use a salve early on. Apple just bullying him out of lane, standing on the high ground. And this is a hard, a extremely hard matchup for any Templar Assassin. This is a terrible matchup for Templar Assassin. I mean, Mamacita is not going to be able to uh, handle his lane at all unless he gets back up from the Spirit Breaker. And even with the Spirit Breaker coming in, I don't think they have a kill opportunity on Hapa at mm -hmm. all here. This is what it's possibly the hardest matchup in Dota 2 at the moment Viper versus uh, Templar Assassin. And even more so because Viper now has an AoE damage over time spell yeah. with Nether Toxin. So he doesn't necessarily have to walk up to Mama Sita and get the hit. He can just spit on the floor and make sure that he's getting the refraction charges taken away. Mm -hmm. I believe Psyblades also get disabled courtesy yeah. of break, which puts Mama Sita in a terrible position. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Top lane though, I think uh, VP is getting zoned out quite hard here. He's sitting at 0 and 0, just closing in on level 2 with his boots, but he hasn't been able to rotate towards the middle lane, which is where he might want to make movements now and yeah, then. Disruption is charged in, but this isn't going to be too much. It forces out a hasty TP uh, from the Slada, uh -huh. uh, which is something that they've got working in their favour. 
Yeah, that was just Lara that was happy to head back to base, but now he has to TP out with little HP and less mana to work with as well. Yeah, he's actually trying to force something on this bottom lane. Now, Khans has his ward, so he's going to see the Slada coming. He hasn't Ouch. put a point into the Repel just yet. He got the last word upon him. No point in Repel. This could be a kill if VP somehow cuts him off and gets the crush. But Khans has read it like a book and gets away. Yeah, he's taken a long path around and managed to escape. Mamacita. Having an absurdly difficult time here. Uh-oh. He could actually die here. Afa, if he gets the Poison Sting off again, he could go for this. He chose to auto-attack him with regular hits instead of Poison Sting. That, now, I can't tell you how much of a crucial mistake that is. Because Poison Attack now has a Nether Toxin debuff on it as well. Yeah. Which means so he'll be doing more. additional damage on Mamacita if he chose to hit him with the Poison Attack. It looks like he's not done his homework on the new Viper. Mm -hmm. That would have been a confirmed kill on Mamacita. Peaceful start here, but this is something that does tend to favour the Yakshas. They're happy to slow down this game, try and take it as late as possible. For now, Disruption, he's just been roam roaming around. Um, he's visited the mid lane twice, but hasn't got too much done. He's trying to be a nuisance to this Viper. Level 1 bash, not much. 17% man. Mamacita takes a spit to the back as well, but he'll be okay. Yeah. Disruption though. Gets zoned out by App. App has also got four tangos to work with. He really doesn't give a damn. Mm -hmm. He's taking a little bit of damage. Now, Disruption's back here with an Invis rune as well as the charge. Appa needs to be careful. Mamacita's back to full HP nearly. Got two points in the refraction, one point in the side blade. Appa. He's got the charge coming out, though, but he chose but not yeah, to. Yeah, Mamacita, no way he could join uh, the Spirit Breaker there. You know, Mamacita's doing alright now that I look at the CS charts and now that my monitor's been fixed as well, yeah. by the way. Um, he's got himself 13 CS, he's forced out rotations from BP, Appa's a bit low on HP. I think Disruption's done what he needed to do, but now they might even be able to score a kill. Never mind, Disruption says there's a Viper there and I'm not going anywhere near yeah, him, but he, unfortunately, he could go down. Appa, again, missing out on one of those poison attacks. This could cause his own death, but Opa, unable to land the circle correctly. The side blades, is he gonna find it? No, he he's doesn't. for the glimpse? No, no vision. That could have been a return kill on the Viper, which would have been entirely worth it for shared deals. Mm -hmm. Kalnayak seems to be having a party on the top lane, though. He's at level 4 versus that Phantom Lancer, and he's getting some CS right under his nose. Not too much they can do, but unfortunately for Kalnayak, he doesn't have the Scorched Earth, which means this could be a death. Disruption's walking in. Opa's available with the Glimpse as well. They started with the Spirit Lance. The Opa Venom Slow is kicking in, and Kalnayak should be going down here. Ah. Kinetic Fuel perfectly placed. Kalnayak will meet his maker. Mid, meanwhile, VP goes in. Mama Sita immediately channels the TP and breaks free. Yeah, so far in the early Bottom game... Bottom though, Khans is also having a beating. This is not over just yet because he's about to lose his life. And indeed, he'll drop with Punk stealing some intelligence. Just a fight all across the map here. Every lane had a kill. Yeah. Except for the middle one because Mama Sita managed to, to uh, deftly TP out there. <coughs> Lots of pauses, lots of interruptions today. Looks like teams are having some issues on the main stage. With so Kalayak both offlaners have died once. Uh, both four positions have died once. It's actually pretty even. Nobody's really coming out on top. If you look at CS, the PS leading by 5 CS. And he's doing a little better than the Medusa, but not by much. So Rivals going for a Soul Ring as well as the Ring of Aquila with that magic. Oh, ball. look at know. this. Bonk. There is a Spirit Breaker just running through, if I'm not mistaken. Not sure that was the charge, but Punk should end up falling. Khans catches him out of position with two points in DJ, and there's no way Punk escapes. And maybe if Punk had a TP, he could get out. That should not have been happening. Khans shouldn't be getting solo kills like this yes. in the off lane. Well, it was Punk's greed. He walked up to the enemy high ground looking for the bounty rune and got punished. Now, Disruption goes in. This should oh, be what? a free heal, but Disruption turned away. A little bit of miscommunication there amongst the Shadows. I think he was just trying to get out of tower range and Khans was a bit too slow on the purification there, but... He's going for the soul ring as well. He's almost got it, in fact. Just one gauntlet remaining. Mamacita, meanwhile. He's got VP just lurking in the middle lane next to him. This is such a terrible lane. I do not envy Mamacita at all. Yeah. VP, 
Ooh, running in past like this, this could be a bad idea. I mean, they do have a sentry ward and they've thrown down the Viper Strike as well. With the charge coming through, the question is, is Marmosita going to escape? Looks like he will. There's the kinetic field. The glimpse is available as well, but Opa makes a mess of that kinetic field and BP ends up surviving. However, Appa gets the kill on disruption with the damage over time. This is without a single point in Nether Toxin, by the way. I mean, he doesn't really need it early on. He would do well to have it. Uh, why do you need two points in... Why do you need additional points in Corrosive Skin, to be honest? I guess the damage per second increases, but versus the Templar Assassin, all you really need is a little bit of damage over time, so you can take down his uh, refraction. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the new Nether Toxin is somewhat good if people just stay in place and stand under it, otherwise... Really, it's not doing much. But with a Slara coming in, I don't know. Okay. I feel like yeah. at least one point I, in I, I do agree. But yeah, the lane is just becoming doing, harder and harder. Marmosita is basically doing physical damage versus him, right? I, don't, I, I guess it's pure damage as well from the Cyblaze, but Corrosive really Skin doesn't really block pure enemies. damage. Anyway, Kalnayak's having a decent time now on the top lane. He's been zoned out a couple of times, but he's getting some decent CS. He's closing in on level 6. VP, spotted by Rival, who jumps in upon him. Rival even pops the doppelganger, hoping to dodge that uh, crush, but he doesn't quite get it off in time. Yeah, they did have the troll and the ensnare uh, being devoured there by the Doom, but just the two of them, it was unlikely that they would get the kill. Mamacita's lane is coming towards an end. There are no stacks for him in the jungle. He's basically given the mid lane to Opa who can catch up in terms of VHP. He's actually done pretty well. He's left 5, 9 minutes in. Should be hitting 6 soon enough, which Hans. isn't too bad. Chasing down Punk on the side. He's got a charge coming in as well. They did bait him in again, but there's the PP coming out. VP with the two-man crush connects. The last word is there as well, and Khans could be going down. Yeah, Khans dropping low. Doesn't have the repel for 16. They've got the Mystic Snake. Khans being left to die here. And Punk will get the kill and will get the intelligence. Yeah, VP, he's uh, more than trying to be the aggressor. He's just rotating and uh, reacting to the enemy's movements and it's paying off for the Yakshas. It truly is. They're now in the lead with about a 1,000 net worth swing going in their favour. Mm -hmm. Doom is doing okay on the top lane as we pointed out earlier and now he's got the Doom online as well. So maybe we could see him join the party. Yeah. They're looking for a kill on Viper. Appa's basically dominated his lane but... Opa Mama's 6. It's... Seeming like a possibility here. It's going to force out TPs. Things are going to start looking messy in the mid lane. All they need is for disruption to charge in. Yeah, but the moment he TPs in, I would assume Kalnayak TPs as well to try and make something happen in exchange. Mm -hmm. Punk is not doing badly on the levels chart either. He's close to level 6 himself. That global silence is going to be an absolutely useful tool versus that uh, Omni Knight. Mm -hmm. They've also got this really cheeky Observer Ward placed down by the Radiant on the middle lane. One. Yeah, they've got this cheeky middle uh, yeah. radiant observer ward placed down, which is basically giving them full vision of uh, those rotations coming out from shield mm -hmm. Al Nayak. They don't have a ward scouting out uh, what's going on around Khans anymore. They do have this lane ward, but right now they don't see open disruption. I don't think they can score a kill here though. acra has got three points in the mana shield. There's no way they score that kill. Instead, they're going top. Kalnayak's gonna miss the Hadouken on the Phantom Lance and with, with this option charging in, maybe they can make something happen. Opa gets the static storm off. He doesn't have enough mana for a glimpse and there's the dodge coming out from the Phantom Lancer as he jukes to the left. He's got the Lance, turns it around, gets the kill on DP and now looks towards Kalnayak. Yeah, Kalnayak dropping low. Secondary charge. So he's got the Anoli Aura coming out from the neutral, but there's no way he survives this rival. Gets a kill, Opa gets another. Why is Mamasita here though? <laughs> Mamasita just jumps in. This His is one of those me too, me too moments. I, I, I don't know what you do if you're the Temple <laughs> Assassin. Has anybody prepared any stacks for him? He's, okay, he's stacked his own jungle, stack. by the way. He's actually stacked his own ancient. He's going to give ones. up his mid tier one. I mean, there's no way they try and defend this without they the can. static storm. I mean, they can. They've got the charge. They've got four heroes in the vicinity. Somebody's got to TP in really quick. Yeah, no charge is hit from disruption. Viper, looks like he was going to get greedy. They are Two traps slowing are him down with the side trap. Do they really want to commit? Yeah, they've got gone. the glimpse and the kinetic feel. Appa trying to move right out of it. But the charge is there from disruption. Do they have the physical damage it takes to deal with this Viper? But disruption, he's going to end up falling. VP not even committing the crush. They tried to bring down the Viper, but in the end, they just gave a tier 1 and a kill to him. Yeah, that was not a good idea at all. <laughs> I mean, you're running into a Viper 
with max out corrosive skin, a helm, seven wand charges. What were they thinking? And right under his tier one tower at that. It's not like the Templar is packing a major punch. She's going for the Desolator, but right now she's only got a Blightstone with one point in the meld. Yeah. Like you mentioned, we've now got the completed helm on Appa. This is painful. I can hear Punk screaming from the stage, charge bot, and indeed it is. They force out the stone gaze, they force out a bunch of TPs. But who's going to close the gap and catch the share that's here? I don't know if that counts as forcing anything out, to be honest, because now they could just group up and take a tier 1 tower and force share to fight them. Share has no power right now. They have no po they have no firepower whatsoever. If Yakshas decide to just group up and start right-clicking buildings, I don't think they're going to die at all. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The, the Yakshas are somewhat poised to try and end early. That's what the Helm of the Dominator pickup tells me on the Viper that they are looking to put an end to this game as soon as possible. But we do have a charge <coughs> top. Kalnak senses that something is wrong, primarily because VP did spot out the Spirit Breaker in the lane. <laughs> Going for VP now. VP <laughs> could get jumped upon, but yeah, there's a Raiden Ward just looking at disruption. This, this, this Spirit Breaker just been going back and forth like a ping pong ball. He's not getting anything done here. Another charge coming out. Back to the bottom lane, and they spotted him charging as well. Akrid's gonna take this tower and be hunky dory. Shadels are crumbling, man. Yeah, you spoke of how the Shadels, I mean, of how the Yakshas can just group up early, but they do have a glimpse on Akrid. Is this enough? Oh, they goofed up. They goofed up. The static storm, a little too premature. Opa's probably gonna end up falling here. Appa gets the kill. They're moving on to Khan. The Thunder Bear, Hell Smasher, whatever he's called. With the clap, Appa scores the secondary kill. Disruption, low on mana. No way they can get him. Punk has started yelling. Oh, they can get him actually. They're just gonna keep spinning on him. Yeah, I mean, by, by the way things are going, we're headed to a tiebreaker. And what a fitting way to get to the grand finals. Yakshas are playing some good. Bottom tower is about to plow dire structures are fortified. You are doomed. Dyer's bottom tower won't last long. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower. Again, the purification is there. Opa finds a kill. They bring down Kalag. They find some semblance of a recovery. The thing about Rival is he's deceptively tanky and then you have Omni Knight standing behind him as well to, to uh, give him cover fire when he gets doomed. That was a pretty hasty doom coming out from uh, Khalnak, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think it was absolutely necessary to go for that kill. Especially because the Slara didn't have mana for a follow-up crush. Yeah. If he had the mana for the crush, yeah, perhaps you consider going for the kill, but without it, you back away. I understand the world film and business in right? some sense. You see the real Phantom Lancer you do. That's, that's a programming. That's <laughs> almost a lot of off laners. Have you well, seen the real look, Phantom Lancer? You lasso him. But you've got to look at where your team is. Esports really came about 2010. So I think, you know, India plays catch up on so many sports. Who's there on your team to help secure that team? Like you mentioned, and I think here we've got a huge opportunity to have a head start. The storyline here is that VP is making the Vision Good here progress for us towards Link Tiger yeah. to make and it once a global shared, sport coming out of India. To take our teams then globally to get global players to come in here. Fight all of that. Fight after fight. Well, it's Maybe it's a smart idea for the Doom to get a Blink Dagger this game as well. I don't like the fact that he's queued up the Shadow Bear. I think it's silly to go for the Shadow Bear. His objective, he has one job. He has to jump in and see what's going on back there and how people are playing the game. I think that's going to come. That conference is going to come very, 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 very soon and very, very sharp. Speaking of Blink Daggers, Mamacita has completed his on the Templar Assassin. That's what he's queued up, he has gold for it and it seems as if the Shadows want to fight early and why not, they nearly got the Diffusal Blade complete on Rival, I think it's flying out to him in the Courier. This is one of those really hard to answer questions though, right? Was it the right idea to go for the Diffusal Blade or do you go for the Manta style this game? Because on the one hand, you're going to be susceptible to the uh, global silence coming out from Silencer, which means that you could be a prime candidate for the Doom immediately after. But on the other hand, the Diffusal Blade is the only tool they're going to have to fight up versus that Medusa. Yeah, they've chosen the offensive route as opposed to the defensive route, but they're choosing to split push with it, which may not be the best choice. I mean, I agree. And they're not. They're not really trading that effectively. Akrid is still going to find his way Akrid back to his He's here alone. He's all by himself, walks in with the stone gaze. Khan drops the repel, 
but Stonegate Spears is spell immunity. Khans might be in a bit of trouble. He's dropping low on HP, doesn't have too much mana, does have a couple of charges of the infused raindrop, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Apra's here as well, they've left Khans to dry. They managed to get it here too, as well as Khans and the Omni Knight. Yeah, Things are looking good for bail. the Akshas. They did manage to bail with the Phantom Lancer though. He's going to continue farming while on the top lane you've got Marmosita making progress towards this Deso. So he chose to take the defensive route, picking up the Deso, pick up the Blink Dagger first. His mobility is what's going to keep him going. Now, the one thing that Sheridils has going for them this game is Split Push. With the Phantom Lancer and the Templar Assassin, they'll be able to clear through waves quickly and do some immense damage on towers. The problem with the, the Yaksha's lineup is that they've got this whole team fight in your face sort of style. Yeah. Doom with a long cooldown, Medusa that needs to be in the vicinity with lockdown to synergize with that stone gaze. It feels like Shadels are onto something, and even though they're in the in the uh, backseat right now, and in, uh, and rather in the deficit in terms of net worth, they have something going for them. They're getting towers, they're getting map space, they're not being restricted to their own side of the map, mm -hmm. and it's not like uh, Yakshas are getting anything significant done here either. They didn't didn't contest their top tier one. Are they getting the last outer tier a tower? Here? They're the not even going to get that, to be honest. They're just going to back away here because honestly, ah. Mama Sita and Rival push too fast. Actually looking for a fight though, Khan needs to be careful, VP does have that blink dagger, uses it to blink backwards and now there's a charge upon VP, immediately cancelled. Seems Good as if the Shadows are just going to TP away, they're going to dodge this fight, they're going to force Yakshas to dance to their tunes and Rival is now going to try and find that space to farm up that Manta style. It seems as if the call um, from VP and the rest of the Yakshas is to go for Roshan. Mm -hmm. And uh, then is a side trap, however, in the pit. So they, so they know what's going on. To get the shells, do you contest? I mean, you probably should, right? It's do or die at this point. Mamacita's got the blink, he hasn't got the death, so they're gonna drop a trap in the pit, so they know exactly what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you gotta contest. Actually, you don't. Because but look at it this way, if you don't contest, then your hope is you defend high ground with what you have and they come marching down with ages. Or you play the split push game and ensure that you're always okay. trading favourably, right? But... Mamacita's being chased by VP though. That's mm -hmm. a problem. This is... There's Could a Doom in the vicinity as well. VP, wow, he just took a major smack to the back of his head and now Mamasita, oh, no, VP's got, not VP's like got this. the vision. There's, the Doom is there on Mamasita. Mamasita is trying to turn this around. Now, what should the Phantom Lancer be doing? He should be trying to apply pressure across the map. They are going to get Mamasita. There's no way he survives. The question is, what did the rest of the Shadows do with that space? VP, that was a smart play from VP, I have to say. He decided to ditch Roshan midway, going for the Mamasita Templar Assassin, recognizing that the only threat to them after the Aegis is if they decide to split push. He shuts down the split push on one side, they can deal with the split push on the other, or they can just go for the outer tower and maybe even high ground at this point. <coughs> they don't really need the Doom. They've got the Siege Wagon, or rather they've got the Sieging Ability with Appa and the Dragonlance. They've got Medusa, who's got a Lincoln Sphere for extra survivability as well. Mm -hmm. They've still got the Global Silence, which they haven't used a single time. They're marching down the mid lane for the last remaining Outer Tower on the side of Sheridan's. Are we looking at what could possibly be one of the quickest games here at U Cypher? It's ironic that the quickest game comes at the grand finale though, but... Let, I don't know, it, I, I it's don't know. very maybe, maybe. uncharacteristic of Yakshas to actually be playing such a quick playstyle. And Shadil's not. Yeah. But look at what Shadil's are doing, man. They're doing exactly what we've been calling all along. They're split pushing time and again. Lancer, if anything, Shadil's are the first ones to do any damage to the high ground on the side of the Yakshas, for what it's worth. They're buying time till that Aegis times out. They're shaving off a few valuable seconds before that yeah. respawn timer kicks off from uh, Viper. Viper's chosen to go for the Maelstrom, by the way, so the Mjolnir is going to be his response to the Illusion Army coming out from the Lancer. Lancer's mm -hmm. heading towards the Manta style, which is the right choice versus the Silencer. Both teams have got their bases covered. It's just VP's making a few smarter decisions for the most part, which is what's getting Khans, and, or rather getting Yaksha's the lead. Yeah. But we're going to see Shadils on the offensive now. So this smoke might dispel and they might not be able to catch VP here. This could go horribly wrong. VP He's quick out. with the blink. I think Rival spotted this. No charge, no glimpse. Take a bow, VP. Once again, he's the one to break the smoke and thwart their efforts. He was out there doing what we like to call garden gaming, but yeah. this is garden gaming done right. When you've got a blink for survivability, when you've got <coughs> movement speed it in the river, out. it works out. Hmm. A quick item check here. Accurate. 
Medusa, she's got uh, a Maelstrom slash Mjolnir on her own shopping list. So they're just prepping for those late game illusions coming out mm -hmm. from Rival. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, Spirit Breaker who's going for the Midas just in case this game starts you know, pulling back in their favour in some form. They're going to go for the Midas on Disruption. Although I think he should consider rushing the Halberd instead. Yeah, the Halberd would do a lot better. It's one uh, an additional way to deal with the Lincoln Sphere. But it seems as if the Shedils have bigger problems right now. They're marching high ground, they've forced out the Glyph. Appa still has the Aegis. So he can play fast and loose here if he wants to. And force the Shedils to make some silly decisions. The good news is Mama Sita's picked up his Desolator. The bad news is that he probably doesn't have buyback. Heck, yeah. no one on the side of Shedils other than the Spirit Breaker has Let's buyback. Let's cut them some slack. It's 20 minutes in and if you're going to save buyback at this point, I, you're you, not even going to You shouldn't be, but it, it, you're still in a dangerous position. The Yakshas are sieging. They've got that Alpha Wolf who's soaking up all the damage for them. That tier 3 is falling and this is going to force the Shedils to... Probably look and try and find I a fight here. I feel like Shedil's made a bit of a mistake there. VP wasn't in the vicinity, he was at the middle lane dealing with creeps. Maybe they could have gone in and baited out a global silence to get, or maybe even gotten a kill there. But Rival, doing what he does best, just moves to the middle lane, split pushes once again. But this isn't a trade he wants to take. Mm -hmm. His tier 3 is falling and there isn't squat he can do about it. Charge from disruption, he just turns around there hoping to bait out a global silence here desperately. But Punk. He's not got that itchy trigger finger today. He's holding on to it until the opportune moment strikes. They're actually going to sacrifice their tier 3 by the looks of it. Dio, mm -hmm. even using the scan to check if the Yakshas have retreated, which they haven't. Nobody's going back to defend the tier 1 at this point. Oh, VP with the crush. He's caught Opa. Global Silence committed. Where's the follow up here? Khans does have the Yule Scepter. Acre just moves up to the high ground. So that's the Global Silence committed. Meanwhile, VP being controlled by Disruption. Nether Strike 70%. Everything and the Kitchen Sink being thrown on VP. And the Static Storm to catch Acre as well as the Slada. Picture time. perfect. But the Racks are under siege. Mama Sita jumps in. He wants to bring down VP and he looks like he will be able to. There's a glimpse onto Khans. They're trying to control the Doom. A quick purification, hoping to keep the Spirit Breaker alive. But he's going to fall. The Barracks will fall as well. And immediately. Buyback coming out from disruption. How do Shadils defend? Omni with the quick repel on the Mama Sita, but Khan dropping low. Appa, he's got the ages. He can afford to do this. The Guardian Angel being thrown out in a hurry. They've lost their barracks, and Khan does end up going down to the Mystic Snake. Accurate, securing a kill. Heck, a double kill. Shadils, they have bought Somebody back stop on this the Spirit Breaker. is just going nuts on the battlefield. Takes down two barracks, stands his ground. He's on full HP by the end of it, and walks away with almost full mana as well. No buybacks forced out by the looks of it. That was a smart doom coming out from Khans. He oh, spotted but they, the real They're trying to catch them on the retreat. This could work. Even if you manage to punish them for going high ground and get a lot of net worth back, like that kill on the Viper got them 571 gold. It's something. And they could hunt for more. They've got the charge on disruption. Coming off cooldown in a couple of seconds. All they need is a little bit of vision. Khans, I mean, excuse me, Kalak, hanging around with the Scotch Earth. This is a little um, hit or miss. I'm not sure he needed to do that. There was even a wild dust pop there by Opa, so they almost managed to tag him, but they'll bail. It's a clean escape, they end up sacrificing two, but they get a lane of barracks and that's yeah. what counts. <laughs> they get a lane of barracks, but it's not the end of the world for the Shadows. I, I think this somewhat estimated uh, them losing a lane of barracks, but they're going to try and find their way back. They're going to try and farm items, which could hopefully change the tide of battle, and they're just marching down mid. 11 seconds without the Viper, this is when you want to do as much as possible, but VP and Akrid aren't going to be giving up the tier 1 towers that easily. You know, we talked about how Shadils could be the ones throwing the first punch, but Yakshas have just come out the gates, all guns blazing here. Mm -hmm. Akrid has managed to pick up a Maelstrom, his Mjolnir's en route as well. He's picked up the recipe preemptively. That's yeah. how confident he is. Yeah. He's going to leave the base with the recipe in his backpack, knowing that he's going to get the Hyperstone without dying. Hmm. It's a little ballsy, if I may say so, but it could work. At yes, this point, so Mama Sita is in no man's land. He's out there by himself. Punk sees him, but he's got the refraction. The blink is there, but he's blinked right into Kal Nayak's loving arms as VP will crush him in the face. They're going to make mince meat out of this Templar assassin. And Punk will walk away with plus two intelligence as well. Mm -hmm. Rival should try and be pushing a lane at this point. Not sure what he's doing with the, the neutrals or the ancients at this point. He needs to apply pressure elsewhere on the map, delay the inevitable final push which is about to come from the Yakshas. 
India. They've just grouped up this time without ages, though. It's all boiling down to this high ground defense for Sheridans. You've got Khans on the bottom lane farming whatever little he can before the fight commences. While Lancer... They have the glyph. No, they don't have the glyph either. They're losing the steel tree. They've got to find a way to start this fight. Maybe just have the Spirit Breaker charging in. They certainly don't want to be giving up this tier VP with the crush. Disruption staying alive thanks to that purification, but not for long. Appa caught in the static storm. Accurate just focusing barracks. Pops the stone gaze. Appa will fall. The global silence committed that can focus the Phantom Lancer. And yes, they will be able to. The doom thrown out. The purification is, purification is there along with the Guardian Angel. But it's not enough to keep the Phantom Lancer alive. 56 seconds without try. And accurate still pounding away on the barracks, barracks here. The Akshas, they are looking forward to taking this to a tiebreaker and they're on the verge of doing so. Mamasita is trying to go in, but he does no damage at all to the Medusa. Look at Accurate man, he's, now he's just showing off at this point. He's standing on the front, right-clicking as if he's daring them to come at him. The last time we saw Accurate playing Medusa, he got up off stage, walked to the middle while his, while his hero finished the game by himself. Maybe yeah. we're going to see some of that this game as well. But yeah, this is what Sheridans do well to some extent. They can catch heroes on the retreat. Disruption going in with the charge, but there is no further lockdown. Opa not even bothering with the glimpse. He did have it, but he's missed his window of opportunity. Sheridans have forfeited a second lane of barracks, and things are looking. I I mean I don't know. I'd be demoralized at this point. You bet. It's not just any lane of barracks, right? It's two of your side lanes that yeah. have gone down. Those are the lanes that are going to be so much harder to push out when you've got a Medusa coming knocking at your door again. Mm -hmm. It's all coming back full circle to the draft. Khans and his boys have been outdrafted this game and how? I mean, to some extent, what was their Templar Assassin pick? That, that's it's what not I not just the Templar Assassin pick. You, it, this, is, this is just cocky coming out from Sheridans. They know exactly what Yaksha's weaknesses are, but they chose not to play against them. I don't know what they were thinking here. Yeah, I mean, I assume that they had some plan to deal with the Yakshas, to deal with the Medusa. But it hasn't worked out so well. I mean, Rival's now completed his Manta style, but he's largely been a non-factor in these team fights, thanks to that global silence. Maybe now with the Manta style, the Shadils could possibly turn the fight and turn the tide of the game for once and for all. Hmm. I mean, this is such a desperate smoke coming out from them. Their top lane is pushing in. Yeah, it's, nobody's going to fall for this. It's god awful obvious that they're not that they're out hunting right now. It's impossible to find a pick off with this. But look at this. I mean, Yakshas are playing this right. They're just grouping up and marching down the mid lane. That's what all do you they do have to at do at this point? Unless you kill, uh, <coughs> unless you kill the silencer first, he's just going to global silence and they're going to press their buttons and finish you off. Rival. He's running out on the front here. Kalnayak sees him. Is he going to get the Doom off? Kalnayak, he's getting charged upon. No Doom for another second. Gets the stop. The Static Storm is there. The, the Stone Gaze, though, Accurate has started the fight. And now you can see the Shadels just tucking their tails behind their backsides and making a run for it. They haven't baited out too much. They're turning this around again if they want to, but there's no Static Storm and they're low on HP. They'll back away to their shrine. Nobody ends up dying. That's but a the win. Doom is still available. I mean, to some extent, it's a win. They've got to fight now. Oh, what a creepy! Crush? The crush of his life. Catches three, but Mama Sita looking to punish. They've got the glimpse on VP, and he should possibly be going down. But the Ghost Scepter buys in some time. Khan's caught in the midst of battle. In another crush, will end up falling to accurate. Well, disruption falls as well. This Medusa is just too much. And with a Viper on the sidelines, there's no answers coming up from the share there. VP time and time again with the crushes of his life has beat the share down to oblivion. The Shedil gets a team wipe. They're tapped out. GG is the call. The Yakshas, they are taking this to a tiebreaker. Fantastic stuff from the Yakshas, but some real brain fart moments coming out from Shedil.